I am absolutely amazed uh, how much uh, Western civilization is unaware of the history of the three great religions of the world. When I first came across this, uh, this idea that there's a hidden history to world religions, a hidden history that we're not aware of, uh, and then I, you know, the more I began to think about it, in order to be a clergyman in America, in order to be a minister in a church, you have to be a degreed by Caesar. The government has to give you a degree. And you have to concede uh, your will and your thoughts and your research uh, to the government. And you have to get a government-sponsored, uh, 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 you know, piece of paper that gives you a degree, and now you can talk about religion. And uh, but, but what is the basis for your knowledge? Well, it's it's the knowledge you have uh, gained by going to college and university and learning uh, what to say and what not to say, and <clears throat> what the story is, and and how to explain the story to the other people because they don't know. And so you learn what to kiss and when and and what to follow and what you're supposed to say, and then you take a test on it. And if you pass the test, then uh, then Caesar and his benevolence and his great graciousness, uh, Caesar who plays God, he will give you a degree. And now you are lawfully allowed to talk about your particular religion because you have done your degree work. And uh, and so it has nothing to do with God. It has nothing to do with spirituality or the human uh, the human spiritual connection to the universe. None of that. It's a degree you get from college. You get a degree from the university, and that allows you to talk about theology and religion as long as you stay within the confines of what your you know what the books say. And so I realized a long time ago that uh, this is nothing more than a than a racket. Religion is nothing more than a racket. It's just a it's just a corporation. It's just business, and uh, but it's a it's like show business actually. Religion is like show business. The guys who promote uh, the business of religion they don't have to go to work. They don't have to stamp a clock at seven in the morning to go to work. They can sleep all day because you will bring them money on Sunday. You'll, you'll send your money to them so they don't have to work. They're not interested in worrying about paying their bills. You know, hell, let you send them money. You'll send them money. And as a matter of fact, you know, they pay their bills, but uh, hell, they buy a $25 million jet because there's so many people uh, who will support them. I learned something a long time ago. And I know it's a very deep concept, and so maybe a lot of people won't understand what I'm saying. It's a very deep concept, but I'm going to try and explain it as best I can. I learned this many years ago, and that is people will always support <clears throat> what they want. They will not support what they don't want. People will uh, will pay money to see a movie or to hear music or a concert that they want to go to. They will not pay money to go to a concert or a movie or entertainment that they don't want, that they don't want anything to do with. Uh, you will pay money to go to a restaurant to have the food you want. They will not, people will not pay money to go to a restaurant they don't like and they don't like the food and they don't want to go there. So they will not support that restaurant or that movie or that movie star or that music or anything else. And, you know, the same thing is uh, true for clothing. You, you know, women will buy the dress they want, not the dress they don't like. And so people will financially and in every other way support what they want. They will not support what they don't want. I mean, I, I know it's a pretty deep concept, but that's the, that's the way the world works. And so if you're going to make money, uh, the, the man who founded Scientology, L. Ron Hubbard, he founded uh, a, a, a religious order called Scientology. 
And L. Ron Hubbard, the founder, said, if you really want to be wealthy and live high, start a religion. Create a new religion. And, uh, my God, you will be awash in money. You don't have to get up in the morning. You don't have to do anything. Buy yourself a, uh, a yacht and sleep all day and relax in the sun while everybody else is out working. And they will give you plenty of money. They will praise you. You will be uh, signing autographs. You'll be like a, a rock star. And you will, uh, you know, you'll live the life uh, of freedom from worrying about anything. Have plenty of money. Do your drinking and watch your ball games while everybody else is working to pay their bills and stay alive. And they're paying you money to teach them. And so that's the way it's been for thousands of years. Uh, you know, scandalous people who couldn't care less about spirituality or the life of, of their fellow man, the spiritual life of the, of the human race or their fellow citizens. They just go out and tell the people what the people want to hear. Uh, the people want to hear certain things. Well, the clergy and the, and the priest and the clergy and the, and the, and the reverends on television and the, and the churches, they know what the people want to hear. They will pay money to hear it. So, you know, if you, uh, if you want a job, there's a good job right there. Just tell the people what they want to hear and they'll love you. <clears throat> As a matter of fact, if you tell people what they already believe to be true, if you can tell people in a church what they already believe to, to be true to start with, if you can show them and explain to them that what they already believe to be true is true and that they are absolutely correct in their beliefs, if you can do that, the people will love you because they already believe a certain belief. They're not interested in hearing anything else. And if you can show them and put their mind at ease that you are proven that what they believe to be true is absolutely true. They love you. They'll throw money at you, buy you cars. And you'll get enough people doing that. You can buy yourself a $25 million jet and fly around with your boyfriends and smoke your dope in the, in the, in the, in the uh, Caribbean. Uh, but uh, that's the way life is. People want to hear what they want to hear. And... Then there are unscrupulous people who are themselves blind guides, like the Bible says, the blind leads the blind, and they are both fall into the pit. And so there are clergymen and TV preachers who we call blind guides. They don't give a damn about religion, theology, the history, uh, paleontology, science. They don't give a damn about any of that. The bottom line is they make a lot of money. And they and they wear all the fancy clothes and wear their fancy watches and fly around in jets. Why? Because the people love them. The people love it. And since the people love it, uh, the the clergy and the priest and the and the uh, and the preachers, they have a philosophy. And I know I've talked with so many of them. Their philosophy is the people are so ignorant, so ill-informed. And the people, generally speaking, don't really care what the truth is. They just want to hear something that makes them feel good so they can go to work and drink their beer and watch the ball game. It makes them feel good. And so they find out, the preacher finds out, what do the people want to hear? And that's what he will tell them. And, the longer, and, and when he's telling them the things they already believe and they want to hear, they love him. And then they will send him money so he doesn't have to work. You've got to work, so you go out and work and make a living and send him some money every week. And if you can get 5,000 people to send you some money every week, <laughs> you can live pretty high. You don't have to go to work. You don't have to do much of anything. You just go out and do your thing and wear your, wear your, you know, your, your mohair suit. And you and dance around on the stage and talk about the Lord Jesus and the Holy Ghost and all that nonsense, and uh, and people just throw money at you. So I learned a long time ago: people will pay to hear what they want to hear. 
They won't support what they don't want to hear. And if there's one thing that we have learned in all of history, that generally speaking, not everybody, but generally speaking, the one thing we have learned about history is that people do not want to hear the truth. They want to believe what they want to believe, the way it should be, not the way it actually is. And therefore, military people, politicians, uh, educational institutes, uh, all uh, commerce, all kinds of institutions around the world realize that the people are generally speaking ignorant, ill-informed, unread, and and uh, and are uh, opinionated, and they have things they like and stuff they don't like, stuff they want to hear and stuff they don't want to hear, and so big corporations will sell you on something that they know you like. And they won't tell you what the dark stuff, you know, the dark part of it that you don't want to hear. So that's what I've been trying to do for so many years is just draw to the attention of people generally how much lies, deception, and spinning of stories uh, to get your money, to get your allegiance. Uh, so that you will follow this particular church and you will follow this particular belief system and never, ever, ever get around to asking yourself one day, asking yourself, where did this stuff really come from? Where did these ideas that I hold so dearly, where did they come from? Uh, and, you know, I, it's just amazing to me. That, uh, you know, like the Muslim community, the, the, the Islamic world, how many people in the Islamic world following uh, uh, Muhammad uh, have ever asked themselves, what is the real, legitimate, provable, factual history of Islam? Where did it actually, in point of fact, come from? Who started it? And where did it actually come from? And then go out on a limb, something that no religious person does, Christian, Jew, or anybody else. Very few people have the guts to step out and say, I don't know about this stuff. I'm going to do some research on this and find out where all this uh, nonsense has come from. Where did this religion of Islam really start? And where did this religion of what we call church entity today or Christianity really come from? And especially, where does this stuff uh, we call Judaism, where did it actually come from? Where did it start? And who were these people in the holy books? That's why Islam, Christianity, and Judaism are referred to as people of the book. Why? Because all three religions are based on a book. And so you know, the, the Old Testament or the Torah or the Talmud and all the other uh, book for the Jews as well as the Bible and New Testament and all the holy books uh, written by the different churches. So all three religions are the people of the book. They need a book to base their religion on. Uh, uh, but it's frightening to anyone who has a modicum of, uh, of brains to look at the world around them and realize how many people are believing and giving their life and giving their children's lives and giving their whole life to believing something which all you have to do is go to a reference book and an encyclopedia and read where the, uh, your organization came from, who started it, and get all the background on the religion that you believe in, and then you find out you've been lied to. The whole thing was a lie from day one. And now the problem is, that if you have been, if you are a believer in your particular religion, 
and somebody comes along to enlighten you and is, ex- and is explaining to you uh, how you have been lied to and tricked, people don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear the truth. You can't handle the truth. Why? Because if you accept the fact that you have not, that you didn't know and you were foolish enough and ignorant enough and self-centered, egotistical enough that you wouldn't listen to anybody else and you had the whole truth. And then one day when you find out that actually, in fact, you had no truth, there was no truth, now you are in trouble because you have uh, promoted something which now you see you've lived your whole life for. You've been promoting it to your children and your grandchildren. You've been promoting it to your fellow man. Uh, you've been out there on the street and promoting a particular belief system that you know is the truth. And then you find out that it's not the truth. That means you have been stupid enough to fall for a lie. And therefore, like I said in times past, young children in school do not like being mocked and and laughed at in class uh, when they don't know something and they have to go to the blackboard and work out a problem and they don't know it because they didn't study it and all the other kids will laugh at you and mock you and laugh at you and call you names because you are stupid and you didn't, and they're laughing at you because you're so stupid. Children don't like that. They don't like to be, uh, you know, uh, ostracized and and laughed at and mocked by their by their fellow students. Nobody likes that, and adults don't like it either. So that's why today, when an adult hears something that he's uh, been believing all his life, and he finds out it's not true, or he's been told it's not true, and given the proof that it's not true, they don't want to hear it. So there are none so blind as those who choose not to hear. People uh, people don't want to know the truth. They're not interested to hear what the truth is. Why? It's because they believe their whole life a particular way, and they don't like the fact of you coming in and showing them that you are a fool. You bought into something a long time ago, Because you were ignorant, ill-informed, unread, uneducated, and you bought into something, and now you find out it's a cult or a lie or some kind of a political CIA operation, and you thought it was a wonderful church, and you find out, no, those CIA and secret societies and fraternal orders have been ripping you off and lying to you. And you've, you have believed it all your life, and now you have to defend it. Either defend your, your faith, or go on and admit it in front of everybody that you've been a fool and believe some bullshit. So, <clears throat> that's why, uh, I, I have always been trying to awaken people, find out what it is you believe and where it came from. And believe me, boy, when you start digging into the history of religion, much less the history of commerce and banking and government and God knows all the other institutions that we humans have baked up for our fellow man, and then find out that uh, all these institutions that we've dreamt up to control our fellow man is all just a bunch of bull. It's all a bunch of lies, deception. The government isn't what you thought it was. Banks don't loan money. The cops are not there to protect you. None of this stuff is true. It's all been uh, arranged for you before you were born. And your great-grandparents, they believed it. And your grandparents learned it, so they believed it. And then your parents came on, and they, they were taught, and they believed it. And then you now, you uh, you have children and you believe it. Now your children are buying into it. And this cycle of ignorance and stupidity never stops. It just keeps going on from generation to generation. And nothing gets better. Nothing gets better. It only gets worse. So the scripture has Jesus saying in the New Testament, by the fruits you shall know them. I know you've heard 
football and the experiments will happen. There's a, there's a passage in the Bible and in the story of Jesus where some people come to Jesus, they show him in their hand, they show him a bunch of seeds, and they ask him, what kind of seeds are these? A brilliant question. What kind of seeds are these? And so it has Jesus saying, well, go plant the seeds. Go plant the seeds and water them and watch what comes up. In a few years, if there's an apple tree there, well, I guess that answers your question. It was apple seed. But if a, if it's a pear tree that comes up after you planted it, well, I guess that answers your question. They were pear seeds. So by their fruits, you will know what kind of seed they are. So just plant the seed and watch what happens. And so the point being, the the metaphor is, is that by their fruits, you will know what the seeds are. Well, when propaganda, when people are talking and telling you things, they they are laying down seeds for your mind. And so, like the scripture says, by their fruit you shall know them. So now, what is the fruitage of the seeds of Islam, the teachings of Islam, the teachings of Muhammad? What has it produced? What what has the seeds produced? Now that we've we've had Islam now for a long time, what is it? Uh, what are the fruitages? We've had Christianity for a long time. What is the fruitage? What has it done for the world? Uh, we've got the you know, Jews talk about that there's the ancient Israel. There was no ancient Israel. But the point being is that the Jewish religion has been planting seeds into the minds of men around the world. God's chosen people. God's chosen religion. But what is the fruitage of that concept? What is the fruitage of all three religions? Well, the fruitage... Uh, as you can easily see, is wars, violence, uh, homosexuality, lunacy, uh, murder, drug addiction, alcoholism, uh, again, conflicts. It's all kinds of, of human in, uh, imperfections, all kinds of human humanity, raping and plundering humanity. Uh, the different religions killing each other, the Islam who loves the Lord Allah, who loves the great God Allah, but doesn't mind cutting your head off. If you don't love the Lord, they'll cut your head off. What the hell kind of a religion is that? And then, of course, you have the Jewish religion, which will tell you that they are God's chosen people and that everybody else is a bunch of cattle. What the hell kind of a religion is that? And then Christianity will tell you that they have the whole truth and nothing but the truth, but every Christian church teaches something different. Every cult, every so-called Christian cult, like Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormons, Seventh-day Adventists, Church of God, Worldwide Church of God, Christadelphians, all of these uh, York Rite cults uh, who call themselves Christians, all of them have a different understanding, and everybody's got the truth, and everybody else is wrong. The bottom line at the end of the day, now at the end of the age in which we're living, the fruitage now appears on the earth that at this particular time in the history of the human race, the world is now falling apart. It's dripping with blood, lies, alcoholism, drug addiction, wars, violence, lunacy, ignorance, uh, it, it, the world itself has lost its humanity. It's lost its uh, job. It's lost its home. It's lost its uh, economy. Now, the only thing left for the world to lose now is its mind. So people are now just plain old losing their minds. And so, again, I'm just saying that if you don't understand where things have come from, if it's not important to you to understand government and law and religion and theology and understand the darkness that's in the men's minds, the darkness that's 
controls the human race, the lies and deception and stupidity and ignorance, uh, then you're just going to get more of the same. Whatever it is that you will accept, you will get more of. And so we have accepted uh, all of the dark stuff that's going on with the drug addiction and murdering children and and wars and violence and corruption and politics and religion and government and banks and God knows everything else. And the educational system uh, is filled with lies, deception, and you get a degree so you can go out and crawl on your knees and make a, you know, that's all you're going to college for is to get a work permit. It's not because you're so smart. You're just getting a work permit. Now you can go get a job. And, uh, and, and the best, and the one who have learned the best and know exactly what to kiss and when because they got a degree, they get the better jobs. Why? What are the better jobs going to do for you? What is it going to give us more money for, for buying boats and planes and beer and uh, living high? Now, but what is your better, what is your education done for you? Well, I mean, I live and I drive a fancy new car and I eat the steak where you eat chicken and I eat lobster where you eat uh, hamburgers and I drive a big fancy car and have my own plane. Yeah, but when you die, what have you done for the world? What is life all about? Well, you begin to see what I'm talking about, that it's futile, that without knowledge and spirituality, the world is lost. Well, that's where we are today. The entire world of mankind is now totally in the dark, and religions are leading the way. Jews are killing Arabs. Arabs are killing Christians. Christians are killing each other. The the systems under which we live are falling apart. It's really quite a story about mankind and who we are and what we've done to ourselves and what we have allowed others to do to us in the name of religion and government and banks and education and all the other nonsense and we bought into it the human race has bought into the lies and the deception and young people going off to war you know they they think they uh they look good and their uniform and all the girls think the boys are so handsome in their uniform and they the boys love snapping to attention and saluting, never for a moment ever wondering what's this all about. How come all over the world and all the different languages and the, and the nations of the world, how come all the nations of the world have the same symbols, the same words, the same terms, the same organizational structures all over the earth in every country of the world. You have the military. You have the Navy. You have an army. You have uh, all the military establishments and in the all over the world in every country you have the sergeants and the, and the, uh, the different, uh, <clears throat> the different officials. You have presidents and kings and rulers and you have the banking. Uh, it's all the same in every country. Every country is, is loaded with the lies, the deception, and everybody has to be in compliance. I don't care if you're in France or Russia, Arabic countries, everybody has to be in compliance. You've got to look like everybody else in the world, everybody else in your country. You've got to believe what everybody else believes. You have to go along with it. Why? Because you will stand out and people will laugh at you. And nowadays they will even kill you. So if you uh, if you live in an Arabic country and you're not Muslim, they, they may cut your head off. That's how much they love their Lord. So I'm just saying that religion and government and commerce, and business, education, and law enforcement, all of this is all man-made one-upmanship. And the whole thing, when you look at the whole world of mankind, like I have been doing for some 65 years, when you look at the entire world of mankind and the history of nations and states and countries and the evolution uh, of uh, the human race 
and the evolution and uh, of the countries of the world and where we've come from a thousand, two thousand, three thousand, five thousand years ago as opposed to what we do now. You know, we're still doing the same things today we've always done in the past. We're still just as equally as stupid, ignorant, ill-informed, unread, dim-witted as the human race has always been, which uh, to my way of thinking is just uh, incredible because today with the advent of computers and the and the web where you can go on and read tens of thousands of reference books, on any subject you want, uh, and go to libraries everywhere with books. There's there, there are lectures by the tens of thousands on all kinds of incredibly fascinating subjects that experts are speaking on, and yet today we are more ignorant than we've ever been before. So I'm just saying that um, theologically we are in trouble. Politically, we're, we're far gone. We're too far gone politically. So I'm not looking for anything political or wonderful to happen. Thank God it might. If it does, it's wonderful. But I'm not going to be surprised if nothing happens. But I am looking at the spirituality of people and, and what their belief systems are. And, you know, and, and I've said this before and I'll say it again, that um, when you're alive, you have the options. You have all the options when you're alive. You can decide what you want to believe or what you don't want to believe or what church you want to belong to or what church you don't want to belong to or or, or even if you don't want to believe in anything. You have all those options in your head. You can decide what you want. <clears throat> but when you die, you don't have any options. When you die, whatever it is, that's what it is. And if it's different than what you thought it is, that's your problem. Because when you're alive, you're in this stage of the game. But when you die, you're in a different stage. And so if you live after you die, I don't know, I haven't been there yet. But if you live after you die, you're going to find out that nothing you thought was true was. 